What's up, pop-up camper family? Welcome back to It's Poppin' and welcome back inside of our garage. So here we have our 2008 Jayco Select 12HW and unfortunately, and as the title suggests, we have some problems with the waterproofing of our pop-up camper. So specifically, there are some areas and let me show you real quick. And I don't know if you can kind of see but back in here, we definitely have some areas where this silicone caulk is most certainly cracking. So that's definitely an issue where if you see that silicone in there, that's honestly probably original to this pop-up. It's getting old, it's getting dry, it's getting brittle, it's cracking. And that, of course, can allow water to get into the roof of the pop-up. So... First and foremost, up and under the roof seam of the pop-up, you can kind of see this butyl tape that's pressing out and once again, that's getting dry and brittle. And not only that, but like check out these areas on the box of our pop-up. As you can see, that silicone kind of gave out and we don't have a great seal under there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys the concept on how to waterproof your pop-up camper, not only the roof seams, but also your box seams and anywhere else where, of course, water could get in. And that's essentially anywhere where a hole was cut for one reason or the other. So then no matter what you need to re-waterproof or whatever needs, whatever issue needs addressing, you can confidently do that. So to start off, I'm gonna work on the roof. Of course, that's the first thing water or rain's probably gonna hit. And essentially, to work on this roof area, I need to take off our um, roof rack mounts. So this is probably um, an obstacle that you guys won't run into, that, uh, unless of course you have a roof rack that's mounted similarly. Kinda just a pain to get off, but uh, in order to, of course, access this, I guess, edge of the pop-up camper, starting with these screws, I gotta tackle the roof uh, rack first. So I've got the roof racket brackets off, and unfortunately, I think I uncovered a bit of water damage, and this is exactly what we're trying to prevent. So let me show you what I uncovered. So here's where that bracket was, and I think whomever installed this just did not do it properly. There was a bunch of, uh, well, there was like some sort of foam sealant pad underneath a bunch of some sort of black caulking not sure exactly what type but as you can see from all this discoloration and the fact that this kind of flexes in a little bit there's definitely been some water damage now it's not so great that i think uh, it's going to really affect the structural integrity of this area it's all still pretty solid but nevertheless this is definitely what we're trying to prevent let me show you how i go about taking off that silicone caulk that's usually in these uh, you know seams and joints. So there's actually a handful of tools that I like to employ to get uh, a lot of this caulk out. One of the recent ones I picked up is actually like it's like a essentially a purpose-built caulk removal tool and caulk application uh, tool. And essentially, you kind of just get into wherever you're trying to pull the caulk out of, and it kind of digs in there and pulls the pulls majority of it out. I mean, it does a decent job. Um, the only downside is, of course, it's metal. So let's say you have a nice new camper and you don't want to scrape up any of your paint. That might not be the best option. And of course, same thing with a metal um, scraper kind of like this. However, this one's really nice for getting up and under the caulk and of course, coming along the lines there and it does a really good job of getting a lot of that out there and cleaning it out. So a good alternative to this, if you're afraid of scratching up any paint, would of course be a plastic one. It's just, I don't know, not as good in my opinion at uh, getting a lot of that out. So what can you do in conjunction with a plastic scraper? Well, that's where like one of these plastic um, razor blades comes in that helps get underneath a lot of that caulk to remove it a little bit more effectively without of course the risk of scraping up uh, any paint. Yeah. 
So here's where you get to choose your own adventure, if you will. So now that we've got that channel of silicone caulk scraped out, you of course, if uh, you don't feel you need to go any further, can of course uh, take your caulk gun and throw your preferred sealant in there. I prefer using the, uh, I think it's GE Advanced Silicone and Take special note, this is of course the window and door stuff, so it gives it a little bit more flexibility compared to the kitchen and bath stuff. And it also is a caulk that doesn't it, um, give off or have any um, acid in it that will etch aluminum. So of course we're putting this on a fiberglass and aluminum roof, so that's um, why I pick up this stuff especially. Now, I'm gonna take this a step further and as you'll see coming up, take off that entire corner molding and put new butyl tape in, make sure that's all brand new, sealed off, ready to go. So feel free to skip ahead if you wanna see us caulking after we put on the butyl tape, but uh, otherwise we're gonna do the whole job. So now that we got that track insert out, could you reuse that if it's in good condition? Absolutely. However, as you can kind of see here, maybe sort of, this stuff has, for whatever reason, kind of discolored. Uh, my guess is just like, just UV rays hit the sun hitting it, things of that nature that's really discolored it. So I picked up some new trim insert. Now, this stuff does come in different thicknesses. So if you are gonna be replacing it, definitely, maybe pop a piece of this out somewhere, measure it um, width-wise, and make sure you pick up the correct stuff. So, like I said, you can reuse this, absolutely, or like we're gonna do, gonna completely replace it after we get to our uh, new butyl tape in. So, you may have silicone in areas like this as well, and the whole goal is to get this entire track off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda slice the silicone off, so that way when I go to take off this entire cap or track, it doesn't bend the metal out of shape. So just something to keep an eye out, or if you're just siliconing, of course, you're gonna wanna take this out and redo it. So now the next step is to essentially just get all of this old butyl tape off the camper as well as anything remaining in the track, that corner cap. Um, we're just getting rid of all of the butyl tape so that we can get some new stuff on there. So now that we got, oh shoot, maybe 95% of that butyl tape off, I'd never aim for 100% because you'd probably just drive yourself crazy if you're trying to get all of the butyl tape off everything. So now that we got the vast majority of it off, what I want to do is also take off the rooftop clasps. That way we can uh, make sure pretty much everything on the roof is waterproof. <laughs> So in spots like this one, where of course there's some caulk running uh, along it, but where uh, almost that caulk is almost like sunken in and it's nearly impossible to get out with manual means, 
I'll usually just take like an isopropyl alcohol or you know some other cleaning agent that way you can just go right on over it with whatever your preferred um, sealant of choice is. So now we're at the point where we can bust out the butyl tape. So this is some one inch variety butyl tape and it comes in different sizes, one inch, three quarters inch, maybe some others, and of course different colors. This is white. So I think in an ideal world, I would have some one inch and then maybe if they made it some half inch for this um, roof, uh, track this corner piece um, but I'm gonna make the one inch work just by overlapping it and essentially we're gonna cover the whole inside with this butyl tape So this is where I like to come along with this metal spatula and get rid of this excess. And this is where, of course, that half inch butyl tape would have come in handy. I feel like I'm being wasteful right here, but I guess it is what it is. So just come along here, trim off all this excess at the top and the bottom. Then what we're gonna do is I like to let this sit and this will be overnight for us. That allows that butyl tape to kind of compress out a little bit more and what you'll find is probably another trimming will be needed. And that way, once you go down to uh, put down your silicone, it's the butyl tape isn't pushing out on that silicone and then of course um, uh, possibly essentially ruining what you're doing. So I'm gonna let this sit and we're gonna come back tomorrow, maybe trim off a little bit more and probably uh, lay down our silicone and then put in our new trim insert. Next step, what I'm gonna do, of course, is take our silicone caulk and drop a nice line all the way down the roof edge. So, of course, for this, have our caulk gun. I always like to grab some sort of cup with water in it and then, of course, a piece of paper towel. And I'll show you, of course, what those are for as we go along. But, uh, like I said, let's just throw down some silicone. <laughs> guys so now that our caulk has all dried on these seams here and especially this uh, seam all the way down here that's gonna enable me to now for of course put our roof class clasps roof clasps <laughs> back on and then also our uh, roof rack mounts so of course I needed to let the, that caulk dry before I could uh, put those two items back on so um, as you'll see, I'm going to throw some butyl tape in between the clasps as well as the roof mounts. Um, put our screws back in, or rather our, our bolts, and then um, caulk around those edges so once again they're watertight. So now that we've got our roof class with the beetle tape under them, now I need to finish off uh, the top part of our roof here. So the way this roof, I don't know, ceiling system works after we've gotten this on is we have to put some beetle tape under here so that we can run our new um, molding or, or trim through here and under 
this metal bracket, which of course will eventually get screwed in. Right in here on the one side, like that, and then kind of just fold this back towards the center and then tuck it back in like so. And now we're gonna do the big long strip here. Hopefully there's enough, yeah, there should be enough in this roll. So I'm just gonna pop this in over here. And the reason I'm coming all the way over is because I need to hit a screw hole right here and right here. And then let's just kind of tuck this in so it doesn't move on us. Then I'm gonna unroll this all the way to the other end, bring our shears and cut it off. And once again, we're just gonna kind of tuck this in. So you might find there's some spots like this that pro there's probably a screw right here. And I just like taking the um, plastic scraper here and just tucking those back up and in. So now we can throw this metal bracket and it kind of just slides up into this groove here and tucks in. And then we'll take two of our screws that we took out earlier and run those back in. Just like that. Now that we've got everything beetle taped and caulked up, I hope that kind of explains the concept behind waterproofing with your pop-up camper. And just to put it into plain words, essentially what we've been doing here is anything that goes on the camper that of course has a screw or bolt going through it where water could get in, you're gonna to wanna to put butyl tape behind it. And that way that butyl tape kind of gets into that um, screw or bolt hole keeps that water out uh, as a kind of second line of defense. Whereas your first line of defense is of course gonna be whatever your preferred caulk is. And of course, we're using 100% silicone here and that's keeping that water from even reaching that butyl tape in most cases. And of course it's, um, uh, you know, that thing where you can keep an eye on, make sure it's not drying out, make sure it's not cracking and even allowing water to get in and it's pretty, easily replaceable as long as it doesn't get too dry and hard. So that's the concept behind it. I hope that gives you the confidence essentially to waterproof anything on your pop-up camper, whether that's the roof here, like we showed in this example, or your box corners, or essentially anything that would otherwise compromise the integrity of uh, your pop-up camper. So it could be where your power cord comes out, could be your refrigerator vents, could be the roof class on the bottom. It's all the same thing. Just make sure you're using that butyl tape and uh, caulk where appropriate and you shouldn't have any problems going forward. So hopefully you find this video helpful and as always, hopefully we see you in the next one. If not, hopefully we see you out there camping.